Okay, um, this is a bonus lecture for uh, Data 222 or STAT 220, um, looking at cloud computing and distributed computing and why it's one of the things that if you get much deeper into data science, um, you're gonna wanna think about using. Um, I'm gonna use some slides that I actually made um, for the graduate class, and I'm gonna skip through it a little bit quickly, but it has a lot of the things on it that I want to uh, talk about. So um, anyway, um, all right, so to start with is the idea of distributed computing. And distributed computing is just the idea that instead of having one big computer, you're gonna have several smaller computers. Um, again, a lot of you have multiple core uh, machines already, and so this just takes that to um, sort of a higher degree. And the idea is that instead of having, um, you know, a single computer work on things, you break a problem up into pieces, and then you can farm them out to separate processors, either in the same machine, which is what you would have if you have a quad core or eight core um, computer, or you can literally have different machines that do some of the work for you. Um, there are several ways we do that, and um, the main one um, has to do with what we call Hadoop file system, and then either MapReduce or Spark. So Hadoop is now a little bit dated, but the idea is that it thinks about how to break files up in a way um, that makes it work. So you could imagine if you had a giant data set, maybe it's too big to even fit on your computer. So how would we split that up into multiple machines? Another way you could think about it is that the data comes from different places. So one example that we have some from uh, some of the work we do is imagine Hy-Vee, right? Every store has its own uh, computer and that's where the cash registers tie into it. Everything that gets sold, bloop, 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 um, gets put into their database. And then every once in a while, I think every night, um, all of the sales figures go from the store back to the central server. But if you could imagine, maybe that data set's too big. So what you actually wanna do is keep all the sales data at each site, maybe you have a backup somewhere, but the data is not in any way put onto a single server. That's what Hadoop file system does, and it does it very efficiently and very effectively. And computer scientists are the ones who think about how that works. But from a data science perspective, the idea that your data isn't in a single file um, is what confuses us. Um, we then think about this idea of a stack, and that's what you see there, which is that you have um, different nodes, um, different levels where the data is here, and then you have software on top of it. You can already imagine a stack in your own computer, right? You have Windows, which is the operating system. And then maybe you have Chrome, which is on top of that. And then you have a Google uh, Sheet on top of that, or Microsoft 365 and then Excel within that. But the idea that you're using multiple software is a thing that we do all the time, right? You're taking things from your Excel document, putting it into your email, putting it into your Word document, all those kind of things. So the idea of a stack is just how to think about that in a more organized way. So anyway, Hadoop is one of those. The other one we think about is Spark. And Spark is a little bit newer, a little bit fresher. What's interesting is the bottom level, it still has HDFS, the um, Hadoop system. And then Yarn is the tool within Spark. And again, that's software that we're not gonna talk about how to code in or anything, but it thinks about how to split processes up. And for a simple project, so you could imagine in R, um, we're going to make 500 random forests or 500 trees as part of our random forest. So we have one computer or one processor that's managing it all. And then it farms out the 500 trees to different machines. You could even imagine I have 500 processors. So each one only makes one, but more likely it's not quite that many. And each one has to do several. You could even imagine that the computers aren't the same speed. So our central server, our job server, we call it, gives more uh, processes, more trees, to the faster computer, and maybe the slow one only does one. And you'll sometimes hear people talk about commodity har hardware, which is the idea that it's just old machines that were lying around. So you could imagine at Truman, right? I have my laptop that I get from Truman. Every few years, I get a new one. And what happens to the old one? Well, there's ways that those get farmed around. Eventually, they get surplused and sold, and on all those kind of things eventually get thrown in the trash can, probably. But you could imagine if we had 300 old computers, could we hook them up? and make that into a network of machines that could actually do stuff for us. So again, at the top, we would have R um, Studio, which is running R. So again, that's a stack there as well, that R is just the one box of R Studio. Um, Sparkly R is a tool within R Studio that calls Spark to do that. 
Um, but there's other tools, Databricks, SQL, you can see a whole bunch of them listed there. But the idea that there's a stack and you have one uh, computer package or one software uh, package managing your files, another one splitting jobs up, and then another one that's actually doing your work. So we can take that a step further and now imagine that the computers aren't even located near us. They're in the cloud. And this is often faster than local clusters. Um, one of the advantages of a tool like AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, Microsoft Azure is that you can get more machines when you need them. So maybe in a given day, your own computer is fine, but every month you run your sales report or once a quarter, you have to get um, a big uh, job that you have to run. Um, Netflix um, once a week redoes all of its search algorithms and then it needs more machines. Um, when does Netflix do it? They actually don't tell us, but because they use Amazon Web Services for that, my guess is they use it when other people aren't and they use it so they can get a giant server uh, cluster at a discount. Um, and so um, this idea that we can use the cloud to give us all of these different services. And so one of the kind of terms of art that you might wanna know is XAAS, which is the idea of something as a service. And so um, DAAS is the idea that you keep your data somewhere else, um, content as a service. Um, more generally, SAAS is the idea of software as a service. So for instance, Google Docs, right? Your files live in the cloud. You don't have, you might have a copy on yours if you have Google Drive but Google Docs itself lives in the cloud and you don't have a big uh, icon you can click on like you do for uh, at least old versions of Microsoft Word. Office 365 is that same idea. Um, platform as a service is the idea that the whole platform lives there. So view.truman um, is a platform as a service. And again, Truman hosts that, so it's not far away in the cloud, but when you're on view.truman, that desktop looks like a computer, but it's part of a single a uh, cluster machine that we have over in McLean Hall um, down in the basement. There's a cave that has a whole bunch of servers in it. Um, you can think of the idea of infrastructure as a server, right? That would be the idea that you don't have any computers at all. And famously, Yelp doesn't have, they were saying that the people in the offices, um, they actually have Chromebooks, very cheap computers that they can use to check their email or to get onto the cloud to use their other things. And every single thing that Yelp has lives on AWS, on this Amazon Web Services. Um, another one that you might know about is security as a service, right? We had that cyber attack um, a little while ago and it totally freaked us out. And one of the things we added was two-factor authentication with the Duo thing where you have to go on your phone every once in a while when you log in. Duo is a separate company and they authenticate for us. And so when we do that, you're trying to get into a Truman computer, but first it pops over to Duo, makes you go in, connects to your phone, gives you that code to type in. And again, none of that at all is located at Truman. <clears throat> and again, XAAS is a whole bunch of things. Um, I once heard uh, ChatGTP is being described as mansplaining as a service. And that's, you can Google that and find lots of funny jokes about that. Um, but let's go back to platform as a service. And that idea that we're gonna go connect to a computer in the cloud. And you could do that with your web browser, which is how view.truman works, or you get a separate tool. And actually view.truman has that as well. You can get that. Uh, um, a Cisco tool that you can use. You can have a graphical interface. Um, you can actually get raw R for cheaper than you can get RStudio in the cloud. So sometimes we would do RStudio on our own machine, but we, we wanted to run it for real. We would just go to a straight R setting, which is just that interface line without all of the other uh, little tools. And then you get all the files as output separately. Um, that has an extra cost though. If you do want the nice interface, if you want file storage in the same space, all of those kind of things. So some companies do have machines that you work on, but then you do a little pilot study. And then when you do your actual study, you could even imagine the projects that you've been doing in this class. Often you worked on a small subset of the data um, on your machine, but if we were really gonna run that all the time, if you were the electric company or the liquor uh, store, uh, the state of Iowa looking at how the liquor sales were going, maybe you would run the script on the small data and then you would send it off to run the big one. When you do that, you have a lot of choices. You can get faster machines, slower machines, more processors, um, more tools. You can get a dedicated server that you essentially own. Um, <clears throat> that has a higher cost, of course. 
Um, in some cases, you don't even know what you get. You just go into the tool in the cloud and it just runs, right? When you go on Yelp, you don't know what it's doing. You just click, I want a Chinese restaurant in Chesterfield and it finds one for you. Um, it takes care of the security for you. Um, you can get it set up other ways. If you want to look like a Mac, you can pay a certain amount and it looks like a Mac. Macs cost more than uh, PCs. A lot of us, when we go to the cloud, we use Linux-based machines because they're cheaper still. Um, the Center for Internet Security has uh, pre-existing hardened images. So if you wanted an image like Vue.Truman, you can go there and they have free setup. So you could get a machine that has Chrome, it has a web browser. Um, a lot of them do run on Chrome, iOS, or Linux machines because those are open source and you don't have to pay for them. Um, but the idea that you can just download um, these images very quickly and you can take these cloud machines and reconfigure it every time you need to do something else. Um, there are several companies uh, that we talk about. I've been mentioning Amazon Web Services a lot. They're the largest. Um, they have about a third of all web services, uh, cloud services, um, things like um, 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 Facebook runs on AWS. Of course, Amazon runs on AWS, Yelp. Um, Fortnite is an example that I've used a couple of times in class. Microsoft Azure is the Microsoft system. Azure means blue, whatever. Um, and um, it runs a lot of things. It's where Microsoft 365 lives. Google Cloud similarly was originally set up just to run uh, the Google Suite. So you wanted to run Google Docs, Google uh, Sheets. Whenever we do that, we're running in the Google Cloud. Um, Alibaba is uh, an Asian company. It doesn't actually do much in the United States. IBM Cloud is another one. That's the one that ChatGTP runs on. It uh, um, it has uh, some of those tools as well. And then Oracle, Salesforce, SAP. Um, some of them are smaller providers. Um, we have some interns who work at very specialty um, AI tools, and they often have their own cloud systems. Let me just quickly mention Amazon Web Services. It was originally started as a way for Amazon to use its extra servers. So if you imagine Amazon was selling books and cords and all the things that Amazon sells, uh, DVDs eventually. And eventually what they realized was that they didn't need all those servers all the time. So they started to think of ways to rent them out. And um, now they control almost half, it's, it's between a third and a half um, of that uh, tool. They have the largest range, they have over 250 different tools you can get from uh, pay-per-click like Yelp uses from very dedicated servers like Fortnite has, two things that would work for your business, two things where you can just go in and get a, a workspace like Vue.Truman. I think I mentioned this in class before, but if you wanted Vue.Truman, um, you would pay four cents an hour um, to have a tool like that. So a medium fast computer running tools that you know, things like Microsoft uh, Office, things like a Chrome browser, all those things. Um, <clears throat> you actually can sign up to get a free um, account um, and go through some classes and stuff with that. That's We do that a little bit in the 322 class and in some of our graduate classes, if you're interested in that. Um, Microsoft Azure is the big competitor to that. Again, Microsoft Office 365 lives there. Um, they have a ton of um, particular things. Databricks is one that uh, CS people use a lot. Um, there was just a breach the other day of Snowflake um, that um, AT&T hosted all of their data on Snowflake and they had a data breach and all of it went out, which of course is the warning. Again, there's lots of other tools that you could use. Um, the smaller sites are often more responsive. Sometimes they're cheaper, but you know, Amazon and Google, they usually work. Um, again, AT&T, if they run into trouble, what's a small company? supposed to do. Um, Snowflake, I mentioned, they're a data warehouse as a service. They're only um, four years old, so they're actually a full um, thing. They've actually made their own bottom stack, so it's different than uh, the Hadoop file system that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, there's always new and new ones coming in. So anyway, this has just been a quick introduction to um, distributed computing and cloud computing. Again, in 322, we talk about it more in the graduate classes. We talk about it more. But that idea that the machine that you have in front of you might not be the machine that's actually doing your work is um, really the way computers are going. And um, I was at a talk uh, last year where someone was saying in the future, everyone will just have um, tablets or Chromebooks or very simple machines. 
and all of the real work will happen in the cloud. Is that true? I don't know. So anyway, that was just a quick introduction. If you think this is interesting, there's lots of ways to learn more, but um, this should get you started. So 